I've been asked to address a few words to you at this time of what I call the fourth wave of anxiety to strike our communities worldwide over the last few months. The first wave of anxiety was set off, of course, by the horrors of October the 7th and the shock it caused. The second, the brutal war we're fighting in Gaza and the concerns we have about a possible war up north. The third is the unprecedented anti-Semitism that we're experiencing around the world. And the fourth wave of anxiety is the Security Council resolution of Shushan Purim, which has created a feeling of national and international isolation. And as I reflect on this, my message to myself, as I think about it, to my family, to each of you, is let us not fear the isolation, but rather understand. Understand its purpose, understand what it means to for us and to us, and to embrace it. What do I mean by understanding the isolation? The Talmud says in Sanhedrin, Ani amati v'yishkon Yisrael betach badad en Yaakov. Moshe, in his last words to us, his final speech, the second last sentence, uses the word badad, which means in isolation, alone. And God says, I wanted you to live in betach, in security, alone. That was my intention. But achshav, but now what has happened? And now the Gemara quotes the verse that also uses that same word for isolation, badad, in the book of Eicha, which we read on, on Tisha B'Av. Echa yashva badad. And the Nitziv of Elohim explains, Ritsuni hayashi yu badad. I wanted you to be isolated, but not horizontally isolated, not isolated by distance and rejection, rather isolated by elevation and height. Being separate because you're higher than the rest of the world in terms of your moral, ethical, and religious expectations of yourselves, rather than that you're distant from the rest of the world because you have been isolated by them. So I wanted a situation where you have no need to mix with the nations of the world. As you betach, then you would certainly find security. But what in fact happened over the past decades and centuries, we have been so eager to fit in with the world, to be accepted among the nations of the world, to be at one with the world. We have been willing to secularize our own nation, our own country, in order to be more like the nations of the world. We've been willing to do whatever it takes to be accepted by the nations of the world. And the result of that is, explains the Nitziv based on the Gemara, Na'asu Badad, we've been really isolated. The nations, there isn't a nation that considers us to even want to mix with us. The intention was that we would choose separateness by height, by elevation, by higher standards. The fact is, we chose togetherness, we chose integration, and we have been cast aside, not by height, but we've been cast aside by distance and by isolation. So what is happening has been foretold. What is happening is part of an evolution of the development of the Jewish people in its journey towards uniqueness, towards separateness, towards oneness, where it will be a nation separate from the other nations, but not because they have been cast aside by the other nations, but rather because we have chosen to elevate ourselves to higher standards than any other nation holds itself to. And that same idea we find in Gemara Brachot, where Hashem says to the Jewish people, You have made me one single integrated unit in the world. You taught the world monotheism. You taught the world that there is only one God. And I'm going to do the same for you. I will show the world there is one unique nation, the Jewish people. And that just as the world gets its blessing from me, says God, the world will get its blessing from you. You will radiate blessing and energy and spirituality and truth to the world as the nation that stands for those things. You make me a single God, says Hashem, every time you say, Shema Yisrael, Hashem Elokeinu, Hashem Echad, God is one. And I will make you one unit when I say every day, Umikam Cha Yisrael, there is no nation like Israel, Goy Echad Ba'aretz, one single nation in the world that is a nation to itself, a Goy Echad Ba'aretz. And so our oneness is part of God's oneness. Our singleness is part of God's singleness. Our integrity is part of God's integrity. 
But the word Echad has another meaning to it as well, which we mustn't lose sight of. Go Echad Ba'aretz doesn't just mean one nation in the world. It doesn't just mean a unique nation in the world. It also means Go Echad, a united nation in the world. We can stand up to the United Nations if we stand up as a united nation. And that is something we need to understand and take away from these events. We are being distanced by the United Nations. And there's a lesson for us in that. We need to understand that we are not the same as the other nations of the world. Our standards are different. The way we live is different. Our values are different. That's okay. We accept that. But we also need to understand that Goya Chadbar, it's not only are we unique as a nation in the world, put together a nation that is held together, not by national borders and not by political parties, but held together by a belief, by a tradition, by a commitment to Hashem and the Torah. That is what makes us Jewish. But to understand that that only works as a Goya Chad, as a united nation. We can withstand the pressure and the isolation from the United Nations if we are a united nation. And that's something each one of us can play a part in, to oppose vociferously any attempt by anybody to drive wedges of divisiveness into this beautiful Goy Echad Ba'aretz, this unique, single, united nation in the world that is the Jewish people, to do whatever we can to bring the nation together, to bring its different facets. We are a nation of opinionated people. We are a nation of intelligent people, of people who have views and worldviews, and they differ from one another. Even our interpretation of the Torah is different. But Goy Echad Ba'aretz, we are one nation united in the world. We come together in our purpose, in our service of Hashem, in the role that we have to play in the world. And so, yes, there are cycles to history. There are times when Jews have it easy in the world. There are times when Jews have it much more difficult in the world. But throughout it all, our own identity is what is important. And our own identity is just as God is isolated and alone and single, but at the end of it, the source of all the energy in the world, so the Jewish people might well be isolated and single and alone, but the source of all this energy in the world towards the service of God, the belief in the values of the Torah, and a commitment to truth and to justice and to humanity. But what we need to do is to make sure that at all times we're focused on goy echad ba'aretz, on being a united nation dedicated to our purpose.